So we've got some dirty brass we picked up from the range. So I'm going to take this and reload it. Here are the steps. First, we're going to clean this brass up a little bit before we can do anything with it. So what we have is a tumbler or a vibratory polisher that sits here and vibrates in this media. And there's brass polish in this media to help clean this brass. So we're just going to dump that in. Put a lid on. Screw this lid on tight so it keeps the dust in and also keeps from the uh, slinging media everywhere. Now we're going to turn it on. Now what this does, it just sits here for anywhere between 6 to 12 hours and shakes this and polishes this brass up nicely. And this is what the cases look like when they're done tumbling. The brass is nice and shiny and clean. Still have the primer in, but we'll remove that. To separate the cases from the polishing media, we'll pour everything into this tumbler here. Once you put a pin in it to keep it from falling apart, After you get them out of the polisher, they're nice and clean. See, so here's a 223 or 556 and a 308. We're going to apply a little bit of resizing lubricant to the case. We're going to put it in a shell holder in this press. And this die sizes the case because the case expands a little bit when you shoot it. And also, that little pin pushes the primer out of the bottom. So, I'll show you how to do this one. We basically take a little bit, don't take much. Let's use a 308. It's a little bigger, easier to see here. Put a little lubricant on that. Put it in the press. And you heard that primer fall. falls into this little compartment. There it is right there. Falls into this little tube of spent primers. I'm going to recycle this brass if you want to. So now we have a case that's been deprimed. As you can see, this is military brass it's been crimped and we're going to remove this crimp and swage the primer pocket before we put in a new primer this one needs to be removed and see the military crimp around there so that'll have to be removed the next steps in this video I'm going to show you what has to be done to this case in order to get it ready to put a primer in it now the case length expands when you shoot it. What we're going to have to do, we're going to have to trim this case down a little bit, resize it, uh, clean the primer pocket out, uh, do several steps before you're able to put a primer in it and load it. So I'll show you those steps. There are hand tools available to where you can lock this case down into a little hand lathe and turn it by hand and uh, trim this case length down. 
Uh, also put a little chamfer on the inside so it's easier for the bullet to slide down in without uh, shaving off some of the copper jacket. But I have a lathe, a mini lathe, and I've adapted my mini lathe to hold the tools to do this, so I'll show you my way of doing it. Now that we've cleaned the primer pockets out, I'll show you how we put the primers in. It's very simple. There's a tool. There's several different styles of tools. I have this one from Lee. It's basically a hand press. And then press on this lever and it pushes a primer out of the hole and into the bottom of the case. The primers come in a package like this of about a hundred and you basically turn it upside down over this tray and then open the package and all the little primers fall in here. You can shake it and these little ridges will turn the primers over and um, most of them will be facing in the correct direction after you shake it just a little bit. Now if, if a primer doesn't turn over you have to reach in there and turn them over manually but uh, most of them will turn up and right themselves because of these little ridges. They, it's designed for that. So once you get about a hundred in here, you can close this and then lock this little switch and that keeps the door from opening up. When you get ready to start doing the priming, you switch it to the own position and the primers will feed out one at a time. So now I've been putting primers in these cases and I've got 200 here ready to go. So I'm going to end this video at this point and continue with part two in the reloading process for 556.